Today I'm going to review the XYZ Printing Noble 1.0 Laser Resin Printer. And first, let me just start off by saying that I've owned this for about a year. This printer uh, I purchased with the concept and the idea that I was going to use it for production use, meaning I do a lot of stop motion animation, and I do a lot of model making and puppet making, and also a lot of tinkering as well. So I needed something that could print at a high resolution that I could use on production. Now I couldn't afford a Form 1 or a Form 2. At $2,000, $3,000, that's a lot of money for me. In fact, at $800, that's a lot of money for me as well. So thinking, oh, well, I need something that I can use, I opted to get this. And one of the reasons that I did this was one, cost, two, uh, it's available, I can get it, I don't have to wait for it. Three, it has a resin reservoir that that monitors uh, how much resin's in the tank and monitors how much resin's in the bottle. So you know basically if you're running out and if you need to refill it. With this autofill capacity function, it actually it does a good job. and, and uh, Make sure, make, sh make sure that you basically have enough resin in the tank to finish your print. And if you don't, you can change the bottle out and it will continue. That's great, right? Um, the other thing that I think is important about this is the available levels of resolution that are within this device are actually pretty high. Um, without looking at the text sheet, I can basically tell you it prints higher resolution than an ABS or PLA printer. I should say most of them out there because in recent technology, uh, we've actually had PLA and ABS get printed really, really thin. But this specifically, it prints at a laser level. And so your layers can be really, really thin. And uh, you end up with prints that have high resolution, right? So now... What are the good and the bad? Let's start with the bad, because I've already kind of given you some good things, but let's talk about the bad things first. One, the resin stinks. It's just gross. It's smelly. It's messy. It's, it's just disgusting. Um, it's like dealing with uh, see-through snot that you've just blown out of your nose when you have a fever. Um, that being said, there's always gloves and there's always, you know, well-ventilated area. So I would not have this in your house. Don't do that. Put it in your garage. Um, the second thing, uh, I would say it's noisy. The printer is noisy as it prints. So if you have a long print and um, you're, let's say, a 10 hour, 16 hour print, and you do have this someplace in your house, it's going to make noise. It's just going to. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, also, uh, the consumables, the platter and the, and let's, in fact, let me show you real quick. This piece here, which is called, I'm calling it the platform or the platter, and this is the reservoir where uh, this lowers in and, and it basically um, builds from. These are expensive. They're not cheap. Um, but I bought, this is the original that came with the, the 3D printer, and this is maybe my third or fourth um, reservoir or dish, resin dish. It comes with this awesome uh, UV protective uh, cover so you don't burn your eyes out but at the same time if you're dealing with resin you've got sticky hands and you're touching this thing that becomes an, a problem. Um, the other problem that a lot of people have had in the past has been that the, the 3D models don't stick to the platform or the prints don't stick to the platform or uh, it just never really even makes it to printing anything. Um, this is This tends to be a problem with uh, one, the 3D model's bad. I'm sorry to tell you, but a lot of 3D models out there, like on Thingiverse and stuff, they're just crappy models that have lots of holes in them. You can fix that through Mesh Mixer. The other problem would be maybe the supports. It, the software builds its own support, but sometimes it doesn't do a great job, and uh, that may be a problem, so the pieces are falling off. The position that you have your object in, that could be a problem as well. Um, so there, those were issues that specifically aren't the problem with a 3D printer, and there's going to be user errors that I've noticed. Um, in my own experience, most of the problem with things sticking and adhering to the 3D printer platform are user error. On my part, on the model builder, whoever gave me the model or where I downloaded from Thingiverse, um, those tended to be uh, bad models. So those are easily fixable. You either go back in and fix the geometry or use Mesh Mixer to fix that. The other problem with adhesion is how it's laying on the platform. So let's say it's sitting like this and you have it lengthwise and the dish does this as it lifts. It goes this way, right, as it lifts. It'll peel sometimes. 
the object being here, it'll peel sometimes and peel away and drop into your, your dish. This can be fixed by rotation and different alignment within the tank. Um, sometimes things just don't want to work, so they just don't, <laughs> you know, and you just have to find ways to solve that. Another issue is the, the software is very clunky. Um, I enjoy it, I can use it, I know how to get around a lot of the problems, um, but it, it, overall, like a software like a repeater host is far superior because of the way you can zoom, you can control and do stuff in. Um, and I meant repetier or host, however you pronounce it. But anyway, so the XYZ printing software is not the best. It's got some issues. It doesn't always work with the operating system that you use with the software. Um, that becomes a problem. But that being said, you can always use a USB and print straight on the machine. So you take the USB port and just plug it in the back, or USB drive, plug it in the back. And that works out great. Let me see, what else is the problem here? Um, basically, like, if you have any issues with your models, you're gonna have problems, like I said, but if you're having problems with the software, you'll never be able to print on this. This is a proprietary system, meaning you have to use the software that comes with this machine. Um, that creates all sorts of issues. Um, but, you can fix those using other 3D softwares. Um, I've mainly use a mesh mixer when I'm trying to fix models, or I'll go into like Maya or Lightwave or uh, one 2 3 d Design, and I'll fix models within there as well. Um, so those can all be worked around. Now, what have I done over the past year? Because this is a year review, right? I've printed probably over 200 objects on this machine. That's a lot. Um, and why is that a lot? Because I work in stop motion animation, I work in animation and model building. Um, and a lot of times I, I need to make what's called a buck and that gets molded and cast. Well, when you do that type of printing, um, sometimes you need to print multiples of a single object or I'll need to print components that make up a toy or I'll need to print dolls, mouths, faces, whatever. And so I've printed quite a bit, like close to 200 pieces or over on this machine. And the resolution has been great. Um, you get three selections, it will, print a high resolution. Now that being said, there's also the thing about uh, what kind of file format are you using for this printer. I highly suggest a binary, not an ASC, uh, because the ASC does not load properly into the software and does not, it just doesn't function properly. So the binary STLs work better in here. So do that, that's one of the ma major things. Um, the other thing is keeping your file size down. You don't wanna go over 200, and honestly, you really don't wanna go over 30. Uh, and what I mean by 200, I mean 200 megabytes or 30 megabytes. Um, and also the scale and the vertical scale, it, it all makes a big difference in like how it prints, what the resolution is. Um, so in those regards, it's uh, it makes a big difference. I actually have super high resolution things that I've printed that I've dropped down within um, other softwares like ZBrush. I'll give you an example, like here's a head. I don't know if you can really see that, but see the support structure on here, all that. Now this is something I built in, uh, in ZBrush, right? It's a 3D head that I made for an action figure, right? This is pretty high resolution, but at the same time, um, you can see there's inner support, which allows the, the 3D printer will, will allow for that. And then uh, something you can't see in here was actually the holes that I had to put onto this thing for uh, the release of the chemicals that you print with because you wanna have as much chemical as, as you can ret retain at the end of the day. You don't wanna be printing solid models. Like for example, well this is a hollow one. Let me find a, a solid one. Like a solid shoe. This is a solid shoe, right? A solid foot. It's a solid object. Um, you don't wanna be printing these nonstop all the time because that right there, that's a chunk of resin. This probably equals the same amount as say this hand, right, at the end of the day. So I can print bigger objects as long as they're hollow. To do that, you use mesh mixer. Um, yeah, so those are all the kind of funky weird things. For me, personally, I love this printer. I think it's amazing, um, the fact that I'm able to do what I can do with this printer at the cost. It, it's, it didn't really kill me, it did take a hit in my, my wallet, but it's here, it works, it functions, and I can do productions with it. I can mold, I can cast, I can make puppets, I can make toys, I can make jewelry. Um, I wouldn't say the end product would be that. Oh, one last thing as well. Um, these are all UV cured resin prints, right? So that means you need a UV cure them. 
And what that means is you either cure them with a black light or you, you, you cure them with sunlight. So personally, I love to just leave them out in the sun. They, they cure better in the sun. They cure a little slower, but they, they cure nicer and softer, if that makes any sense. Um, with a black light, um, I've cured them with black lights. I've actually over cured them and had cracking and, and, and models actually break in certain areas that I didn't expect. Um, also heat and discoloration uh, from probably the heat of the black light. So those are some things to consider as well. But after, you, after you're done printing on here, you need to pull the object off of the platform using a scraper. And then you need to bathe it in uh, rubbing alcohol. I use 99% rubbing alcohol. And they pull that out and I wipe them down with a paper towel real quick and then rinse them off with the rubbing alcohol as well. And then I leave them sit out in old used XYZ platters so I recycle these things instead of throwing them in the trash. So, or reservoirs. And that's better use of them than putting them in the recycling bin. And that's pretty much what I do, man. I mean, if you want to see an example of some fun stuff, here is a action figure, custom action figure bottle, body I made for a stop motion production. Um, maybe I'll post some other stuff. Oh, here we go. Here is a Brian Cranston elf on the shelf head that I made for this. So uh, the Late Late Show called me up and said, hey, we want you to make some puppets for us for the Brian Cranston show. Not Brian Cranston show, sorry, for the Late Late Show with James Corden. And I said, sure, yeah, that sounds fun. So here's one of the heads, all right? And that literally took maybe three day turnaround to get to this point. So you had to mold, sculpt, I had to sculpt them, I had to print them and then I had to mold them and then I did a roto casting process. It's actually a hollow plastic. And then this got attached to an elf on the shelf. So anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, there's not much more I can really say. I suggest this printer for anybody interested in a low budget uh, 3D printer that can give you high resolution to be able to mold and cast things from. Um, if you wanted to do action figures with this thing and then take the direct one, make action figures, I wouldn't suggest that. The material is just not strong enough. Um, but if you're using this to make artwork, sculptures, or props for your uh, stop motion sets and stuff, this is a great option. So. And if you have any questions, please leave the comments down below in, uh, in Stop Motion Magazine comment section down below. Also, please subscribe to the magazine um, through our YouTube channel. We also have a website. You can go to stopmotionmagazine.com and uh, check out all the latest news and stuff that's going on within the world of stop motion. We have some tips and tricks and stuff like that. And if you'd like more reviews on other stuff, send me messages. I am open to reviewing whatever you got. Just send it to me. All right. Emails. Uh, on the website and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future. So, thank you and keep animating.